Hi, welcome to Being Spatial, a discussion about working in a field that integrates art with analytics and math with mountain climbing. Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to tell you a little about what I do for a living in the hopes that it might give you some ideas about job opportunities. Remember in grade school when you were taught about jobs you can have when you grow up? You could be a doctor, a fireman, a mailman, an engineer, a nurse. Well, I'd like to add a job to that list. And this is a job that you may have never heard of before. It's a job that doesn't get boring. It allows me to work in the office or sometimes in the woods, in a big city or in a small town. And it's a job that allows me to work with and support people in all of those other fields. I'm a geospatial professional. I support doctors doing research, firemen saving lives, mailmen delivering our mail, and engineers designing new roads. People in my field also support geologists in the oil and gas industry, environmental scientists studying turtles, environmental scientists working to protect our earth, farmers growing their crops, local governments mapping their cities with drones, and NASA scientists landing the Mars rovers. We make beautiful artistic maps, we hike in the woods to map birds' nests, and we help cities manage their public utilities. If you're someone who thinks analytically, likes to solve problems, who maybe is a bit artistic, who likes working with computer programs and learning about the earth, the geospatial field might be for you. You may have heard of this field or you might see it listed in college programs as geographic information systems. So the GIS is the platform that we use to do geospatial work. So just a little about me before I get into all of this. My name is Jenny Harrison. I founded Teach Me GIS back in 2001. That's a GIS training center based in Houston, Texas. I've been teaching and consulting with GIS for almost 30 years. This is the Teach Me GIS team and that's me. So my little story, how I got into GIS, I grew up in Sturgis, Kentucky, way over on the west here, and went to school at Murray State University. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in Mathematics and a Master of Science degree in Geosciences with a specialization in remote sensing. Back then when I did my degree, remote sensing meant satellite images and aerial photos. We were looking at areas in Kentucky that were um, should be designated as wetlands based on when we had the last rain and where there was standing water. We were also mapping land use in Kentucky. Um, after school, I moved to Belize. Wait a minute, here's Sturgis way up here, right? Over here in Union County. After school, I moved to Belize, a Caribbean nation in, this, in Central America, where I worked for the Ministry of Natural Resources as a land information officer. Okay, as a geographer, I have to tell you, of course, it's a Central American country in Central America, but it has very much a Caribbean culture. That's why I call it a Caribbean nation. And it does have a coast in the Caribbean Sea. This is the GIS team of the lands department. I'm missing from that picture because I was taking the picture. <laughs> we were on a field trip to Key Calker to learn about mapping uh, species on the coral reef. In the office, we were mapping protected areas, the national parks and all of the land parcels in the country. So here's one of the early maps that I made back in the 1992 uh, showing protected areas in Belize. Belize, of course, is down here on the Caribbean. And I lived and worked in the capital city, Belmopan. You can see in the GIS, if I go in really close, what the city looks like. Anyway, um, I, at that time, my daughter was with me. She was in first grade. Uh, 25 years later, my daughter returned to Belize to teach a class for the Ministry of Works in Belize City. And this is my daughter here, 
kind of on the left, um, teaching GIS. So we're a second gener generation GIS family. My work has kind of taken me all over the globe and all over the US from California to New York and almost every state in between and countries around the world. I've done GIS as far away as Japan and I've traveled to Dubai for work. I have trainers, my, some of my team have gone to Angola, Nigeria, and Thailand to teach and to do GIS. So the point, my point being that GIS is found all over the world in practically every country and every state and every city. So that brings up the question of where, where can you find GIS or, or the better question, where can you not find GIS? You find GIS being used to map this, the ocean floors and to map the skies. This is a GIS map of Mars. As NASA uses GIS as one of the tools in helping to plan landing sites for the Mars rover. So it really is a, a field that can be it's used as support in, in many, many, many different uh, industries around the world. So it's a really good skill to have. It's a good field to get into. So what does it mean to be a geospatial professional? Well, it means you work every day with maps and databases. You probably studied geographic information systems in school or at least took a few classes. You're likely to have a degree in environmental science or urban planning or computer science or criminal justice or public health, but there are many other degrees that can lead into GIS. You probably like computers. You might be a bit artistic. It, it helps in making maps. And also you like to solve pu puzzles and solve problems. By the way, this is a map of uh, karst areas in Kentucky. These areas that are red are karst. They are areas that are made of uh, limestone that erodes easily with water. And they're, they're areas where you're likely to find caves and sinkholes. This area in this black box is around Bowling Green, Kentucky, where, of course, there's Mammoth Cave. What also is in Bowling Green, Kentucky is a Corvette Museum. And a few years ago, a sinkhole opened up right under the show floor of the Corvette Museum. So this is a map that I made showing the, um, the Corvettes that went down in the sinkhole and the areas, the other areas in Kentucky that are susceptible to, to sinkholes and to caves. So there's a little bit of geology in some aspects of GIS, but not everybody works with geology. Some people work in, um, marketing, for example, with GIS. So it's a field that crosses many different industries. Some example job titles where GIS is used, environmental scientist, urban planner, crime analyst, public health professional, biologist, GIS technician or GIS specialist, real estate developer, transportation specialist. Well, I thought it might help if I give you a few examples of some of the industries that I've worked with, some of the organizations I've worked with, and what the GIS people do in those organizations. So for example, in public health, public health professionals, so every state and most counties in the US have a public health department or something similar. GIS is used by these departments to track disease, to reduce the risk of environmental catastrophes, and to protect people from dangerous chemicals in the water, the air, and the soil. Some examples of what you might have seen, some examples of where you might have seen the work of a GIS professional, like the county and state COVID dashboards are made by a GIS person. This is the Kentucky uh, G uh, COVID dashboard. Analysis, oh, so analysis of asthma and other ailments near industrial plants. I saw a, a gentleman give a talk in Louisiana. He owned a clinic and he mapped the location of his, he mapped out where his patients came from. And, and then he mapped clusters of asthma in his patients. 
and he could zoom in on their on the neighborhoods where there was a lot of asthma and he could look around and see what sort of industries were nearby. I remember he found one big cluster of asthma across the street from a wastewater treatment plant. Without a map, that probably would have never gone detected. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a, a map is even better than that, right? Um, so groundwater contamination studies. I know a group in Louisiana was looking at if uh, when, it, when there was a, a tanker truck that crashed and spilled out its chemicals, what aquifer was that chemical going to go into and who in the region pulled had wells drilled into that aquifer. So who was going to be sucking up water that got contaminated by that crash that happened over on I-10. Um, even restaurant inspections are mapped with GIS. Uh, another case, another thing that I've seen people are doing is like mapping hazardous material handlers near daycares and near um, elder care facilities. So who in the public health field hires us GIS people? Well, state and tribal nation departments of public health at the state level or the tribal level, county departments of public health hire us, especially in densely populated areas like where I live in Houston. Hospital systems hire us, World Health Organization and, and other um, NGOs at the international level hire us and researchers. Uh, I did a project for um, some doctors doing research into um, availability of public health, availability of, of, of hospitals to people. Anyway, so that's public health professionals, just to give you an idea. Uh, what they use GIS for. There's also an industry, a sub-industry around GIS called remote sensing, and there are companies who hire GIS professionals to do remote sensing for a living. Remote sensing specialists collect and look at and clean up satellite imagery and organize it and redistribute it. They use LIDAR data. They collect and redistribute and clean up LIDAR data. LIDAR is a high, it's a, it's, it's a laser, so they, they shoot a laser out of an airplane and the laser bounces back and they um, record how quickly that laser bounces back and using that they can calculate the elevation of the earth and the other things that that laser might bounce off of like buildings. So using this LIDAR imagery they can map all the buildings in a city, they can map the Mayan ruins in Belize, um, they can map vegetation, the heights of trees. This, um, this is one of the Mayan ruins in Belize called Caracol. When I lived there in the early 90s, we mapped all the Mayan ruins that we knew of, but someone flew parts of Belize a few years ago with LIDAR and they discovered a whole bunch of entire Mayan cities that we had no clue existed because they were under several hundred years worth of forest growth. But the LIDAR was able to map the bare earth, map the surface of the earth underneath those trees and and discover all sorts of really cool things. Lots of cool temples and, and ruins that we just didn't know about. So that um, um, so that's LIDAR imagery, I mean LIDAR. And then imagery is um, used by the military uh, for all kinds of government agencies, like to look for um, uh, any kind of flooding or damage that's been happening uh, in an area. And for commercial purposes, like the oil and gas industry gets imagery around their pipelines and their facilities. Along with this industry is the, the, whole, con the whole industry around drones and flying, uh, becoming a drone pilot. Um, I had a, um, I knew a guy who, he worked for a city out here in West Texas, out in West Texas, and he got a drone and put a GoPro on it. And, and then he used that drone to inspect the water towers because before he had the drone, he had to climb up on top of that water tower every year and look for any kind of rust or damage on the water tower. But with the drone, he could just give it the coordinates of the very top of that water tower. And the drone would fly up there and circle around and take images of it. So nobody had to climb all the way up on the top of that thing anymore. So all kinds of people using remotely sensed data. So who hires us? Imagery companies. Again, local, state, and tribal governments hire us to fly drones. Federal governments and their contractors and researchers. Um, another example of drone use was a, a 
uh, sheriff's department here in Houston, they had an environmental police person. And th there was this, a lot of problems with this stream getting, um, there's trash all over the stream and nobody knew where it was coming from. And so they got a drone and flew up the center of the stream and took imagery all along the stream. And they found several, I don't know, 100 yards up, uh, somebody was doing some illegal dumping right by the stream. And every time it rained, that trash would just dump into the stream. And they would have never found that without having a drone that could fly in that area. But that was, so that was the sheriff's department doing the hiring of the drone uh, pilot. Uh, what else? Environmental science in general, um, tracking turtles, for example. I worked with a guy who, um, he was based here in the U.S., but he traveled to Angola, or maybe it was Nigeria, I'm not sure, somewhere on the west coast of Africa, and he worked for an oil company, and they were, um, they were mapping all the turtle nests, because if the turtles laid eggs too close to their pipeline, then the environmentalist, environmental scientists working for the oil company would carefully move those turtle eggs to a safer place and GPS the location of both where the nests came from and where it got moved to. They track sharks and other species, all kinds of um, protected animals with um, G GIS. Environmental scientists also do groundwater quality, hydrography studies. There are a lot of um, environmental um, scientists who work for the Texas uh, Natural Resources, no, Texas Center for Environmental Quality. Um, and they have those at every state uh, looking at, yeah, groundwater quality and river water quality, all the, the sources of water that we get drinking water from or we get fish from that we might eat. Uh, environmental enforcement, like the sheriff's department I mentioned, finding the trash. The rigs to reef program um, where they, the oil companies, when a rig is no longer used, uh, an oil rig is no longer used out in the Gulf or in the ocean, they can decommission it and sink it. And, and that attracts fish to come live there. And it's kind of a safe haven for fish. And it really develops the fish populations. And they map those with GIS. And um, the, the agency that works out there is called BOEM, the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management. And they hire GIS professionals environmental protection, environmental cleanup, the oil and gas companies and in Kentucky, the coal companies hire environmental scientists to do studies before they go into work to make sure that they damage as little as possible and then to do the cleanup afterwards. So what kind of animals do protected animals and species do they need to watch out for when they're working in the area? Flood monitoring. This is a map of uh, San Ignacio in Belize that was recently flooded from Hurricane Eda. Um, and then mapping the trails in the mountains. If you work for a parks department, for example, you might get to hike in the mountains. And I taught uh, some gentlemen in San Jose, California that worked for the parks department. They had mapped all the trails, all the campgrounds, even all the bathrooms in the, in the parks in the area. So who hires us GIS people to do environmental science? Well, environmental service companies who do contracts for bigger companies. Oil and gas companies hire us. I've met environmental scientists working at ExxonMobil, for example. Um, land developers, they're going to develop a new subdivision. And at the state level and the federal level, the departments of natural resources, the departments of environmental quality, and even the departments of transportation. Every time a new road is built, someone has to do an environmental impact assessment first before that road is built. So that's at the state, the tribal, and the federal level. And uh, federal, state, and local park services, as I mentioned. So environmental science is another field. Uh, public safety is a field that's a big user of GIS. They map 911 calls as they come in. So GIS professionals go out and make sure that every house is addressed, that we have a proper address for them so that the ambulance can find them if something happens. Uh, GIS professionals make sure all the streets are drawn correctly and, and are up to date so that fire trucks can be routed quickly to emergencies. GIS professionals help make maps to plan for security for large events like the Super Bowl. So who hires us to do public safety GIS? Well, local police departments, they hire us in crime analyst positions. Fire departments hire us in their next gen 911 teams. 
next gen next generation 911 that's um, where we're all the calls that are coming in are coming in with a latitude and a longitude and getting dropped on a map and so right now there's a big effort around the country to get all of our addresses properly uh, digitized into the computer county sheriff's offices state police uh, and tribal nations hire us for crime analysis and even multinational corporations like some of the big oil companies um, the big computer companies, they hire GIS professionals to help them with their global security. So mapping all the incidents that occur around the globe that might affect their staff. So lots of uses for public safety as well. So it's the point of this whole talk is to say GIS is kind of everywhere. It's almost as common, well, not quite, but we want it to we want you to think of it like Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint and then there's GIS another tool that can be used in so many industries. The energy industry uses it for discovering new energy deposits by mapping the underground geology. So geologists who work for Chevron use GIS to figure out what's underground and then also to map the wells that have already been drilled and to map their pipelines and to route pipelines through a safe area where it won't, um, there won't be any danger to people or animals as best as possible. Um, and then to maintain the safety of their pipeline, to do inspections on the pipeline as required, uh, to make sure that nobody's constructing something or about to dig right near a pipeline. And also in the uh, new green energy, right, the planning and positioning of solar panels and of wind farms. So what kind of companies hire us GIS professionals? Well, energy companies like I've worked with ExxonMobil, BP, Shell, and the service companies who work with them. The Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management that I mentioned earlier is called BOEM. They're the ones who keep track of all the reefs, the rig to reef programs and the rigs and the pipelines and all the other energy resources in the ocean. That's a federal, a US federal agency. Well, and how about urban planning? When we're planning new neighborhoods, downtown redevelopments, new green space, uh, when we're trying to look at traffic flow and improving traffic flow, looking at bicycle routes, like I mentioned the group here in Houston who does the routes from the, uh, um, well, there is a group here in Houston that uh, plans bike routes all the way out from the subdivisions to downtown Houston. Public transportation, planning light rail and, and trains and uh, buses. So who hires us? City and county governments in their planning departments and their transportation departments, architecture firms, and again, land developers. But a lot of city and county government GIS positions good solid positions and it's really good to work there. And then even community organizing uh, around politics and public surveys and crowdsourcing, redistricting, census data and demographics, all of these uh, areas use GIS for maintaining their data and for doing analysis. So what you're seeing in the background here is a map of um, the people who do not have health care or health insurance, I mean, who don't have health insurance in the US. So the bigger the dot, the more people without health insurance in those areas. Who hires us? Political parties, nonprofits, and again, state and federal government. The Census Department, for example, is a big organization that hires GIS professionals. Okay, just a couple more. Uh, local government then, we've mentioned several ways that local government use GIS, but they also map their utilities, their electric, gas, and water lines. They do zoning and permits and land use. So if you want to build a restaurant on the corner, you got to make sure that land allows restaurants to be built there. So you'll have to go down to the local government and you'll have to get a permit to build your, your restaurant. And before you can get the permit, the government will check their GIS and see if that piece of land is a, if a restaurant or a business is allowed on that piece of land. Some places it's only residential is allowed or only as industri an industrial is allowed. Uh, your school systems use it to plan bus routes and uh, redraw the school districts and uh, decide where to put new schools. Tax assessments are done with GIS or managed, the data is managed with GIS. How much do I have to pay? 
for taxes on this piece of land and a redevelopment. So who hires us? Local government at the city and the county level. It's the engineering departments and the planning departments for two. <laughs> the appraisal districts or assessor's office also hire us. And again, in local government, police and fire departments. So transportation departments, anybody planning bus routes or train routes or roads or bike routes, and also economic development agencies like we have one here in Houston called the Houston Galveston Area Council. They map things like food deserts. You know, that's where areas like in down in, in big cities where the, the groceries have all shut down and moved away. And there are people who live there who don't have um, groceries within walking distance or and, and many of them don't have vehicles right so it's food deserts uh, access to services job developments uh, locating new factories and they keep track of like where are all of the vacant buildings that we could help promote to outside businesses if they're coming into town they're big users of gis economic development councils um. Okay, and just two more, the facilities management and operations. So GIS is used a lot to map buildings and campuses and also to manage shipping and transportation and trucking. So who hires us? Companies like Walmart to manage where all their trucks are and, and where all of their Walmarts are and what data goes along with those Walmarts. J.B. Hunt, I have a friend who works for J.B. Hunt who um, they do all their transportation stuff with GIS, shipping all of their ketchup around the country. Uh, international Paper, I have a friend who used to work for International Paper. They mapped, they kept track of all of their for, um, forest stands and how much was cut down and how much was replanted every year with GIS. Uh, the oil companies like ExxonMobil, they use it to map their main campus here in Houston. They have a beautiful new campus and they have the entire place mapped in 3D in GIS. And they have a sort of a, a routing tool where if you're in one office and you have a meeting in another building in another office, you can just search that address and it'll give you the route to walk there. Um, but they also map all of their refineries and chemical plants and all with GIS for safety and security, right? To make sure um, they have their fences are maintained and, and uh, nobody is smoking too close to the gas pipes, <laughs> that kind of stuff. And all of your universities, well, most universities have a GIS as well, where they've mapped all their all the buildings, all the classrooms, um, all the fire hydrants, all the electric and water lines, everything to do with the campus, parking spots, especially <laughs> um, in a GIS. So facilities management is another big aspect of using GIS. And finally, the IT and computer side of GIS, if you like application development or computer programming uh, or working with databases, there's a, a place for you in the GIS field as well. Who hires us? Well, software companies like Esri, they're the producer of the, they're the biggest GIS company in the world. Uh, and they, they're use, they make the software that I teach. Um, Google and Apple, because they have maps and mapping applications in their suite of products. And also companies who sell software and data to other companies. For example, I work with uh, um, software that kind of sits between GIS and the end user. So I work with some companies out here in the Houston area that sell a big, big, huge data set to the oil industry. One of them sells pipeline data and another one sells data for the Gulf of Mexico. So they sell the data and they sell software that sits on top of their GIS that makes it easy for them to access the data, right? So, so, so it's kind of GIS adjacent softwares that work with GIS to make GIS easier. Anyway, so the whole idea there is just to show you that there are a lot of industries, a lot of ways that you can get into GIS or use GIS to make yourself more marketable in whatever industry you're in. So have I gotten you excited about a field in GIS <laughs> or in the geospatial field? I hope so. Uh, if so, you might be wondering how to get into the field. Well, if you really like it, look for a GIS degree. You can get a bachelor's or a master's or even a PhD in GIS now. If you already have a degree, 
and you're just looking for a different job or, or your first job, look for a GIS certificate program. A lot of pe people out here in Texas with bachelor's degrees in sciences are getting a GIS certificate program to kind of cap off that um, bachelor's degree. Uh, or you can study in a study a science field and just take GIS classes like my daughter who's a biology major or was a biology major and now does GIS or one of my trainers who was a wildlife biology major and does GIS. I have another trainer who was a zoology major does GIS. Uh, another trainer, Samir, he, he did um, environmental science in Belize actually and uh, um, he he does GIS now. Um, so people come from many different science fields and get into GIS. I also have friends who do or who studied urban planning and do GIS. So lots of ways to get into it. But first, the first step is look for a GIS class. And in addition to taking classes, seek out GIS. Do Google searches, watch videos, read about it, read about drones, just spend an hour one day, look at what's going on with drones, search that LIDAR, um, LIDAR survey of Belize Mayan ruins. It'll be interesting, I think, for you to see. Um, and then if you're in school, look at job postings like at indeed.com, see what companies are advertising for, look, what are they looking for to hire, and that's how you'll know what classes to take. For example, you need to at least take one programming class. You don't have to be a programmer, but you got to know what an if then statement is in a program. You need to take a remote sensing class, at least one. Um, you need to take a um, if possible, a geoscience class like Geology 101 or Geomorphology 101 would be better to understand the structure of the earth and tectonic plates. All of those things will help you uh, have a really strong foundation into GIS. So a programming class, a remote sensing class, and a class in geomorphology. Um, and then attend local GIS conferences and GIS day events and, and just listen to what people are doing in their jobs every day. And that'll help you know what you need to learn to be successful in this field. Anyway, I think I'm out of time. So hopefully this has been useful to you. Um, my name is Jenny Harrison again, and my email address is jennifer.harrison at teachmegis.com. Write me anytime if you have questions about the industry. Um, I always love to hear from other people who are interested in GIS. Thanks for attending my talk.